Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this video, we're going to figure out this problem right here. We have two to the eighth power divided by 16. We want to figure out what this is equal to, and we do not want to use a calculator other than the one in between your ears, which is not artificial intelligence. That in fact is a supercomputer. So uh, anyways, this is not that difficult. And there's a few different uh, kind of approaches you could take. Of course, you want to try to uh, do this as easily as possible. And uh, what I'm going to show you here in a second is this particular problem is a nice example problem to um, look at a really important rule in algebra. So this is kind of a basic introduction to um, powers and exponents. We're going to look at a particular rule, but I don't want to give away too much here because I want to give you a full opportunity to figure this out all on your own. Again, do not use your calculator. And if you know how to do this, if you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. And then, of course, I'm going to fully explain this problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so uh, first thing that we want to kind of recognize is we have two to the eighth divided by 16. Now, um, of course, this is a division problem, but this is also a fraction problem. Fractions are, in fact, uh, division problems, if you will, because we're taking a numerator and we're dividing it by a denominator. So what we want to do, and you don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to suggest that you do, is rewrite division problems or think or be able to think of division problems as fractions. Okay, so this would be the numerator and the 16 would be the denominator. So 2 to the 8th divided by 16 or 2 to the 8th divided by 16. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and rewrite the problem uh, like this. Okay, now why is this uh, a nice way to rewrite this problem? Well, let's just take a look at a simple, simple example. What if I had uh, 12, oh, no, let's do something like this. How about 10 over 18? Now, if I had 10 over 18 and I asked you to simplify or reduce this fraction, what would the answer be? Well, you would probably say, well, let's see here. What goes into this? What goes into this? 2 goes into 10, uh, 5, and 2 goes into 18, 9. So you would say, oh, well, the answer uh, to reduce this would be 5 ninths. And you would be correct. But what are you technically doing? Well, what you're doing is you're breaking up the numerator and denominator into its factors. So for example, 10, you're going two times five, right? Those are factors of uh, 10. And then 18, you might be thinking three times six, but three and six isn't really gonna help us out here because we don't have any like factors. So you're kind of going through different uh, iterations. You're like, oh, wait a minute, two and nine, that's nice. Now, why did your brain do that? Because right here, we have a two in the numerator and a two in the denominator. This is what we call like factors. We could cross cancel these guys and we're left with the answer. Okay, five nights. So uh, if you really um, you know, uh, know how to reduce or simplify fractions, this is what you're doing. Now you may not be thinking about it in those terms, but that's exactly what you're doing. You're looking at like factors amongst the numerator and denominator to uh, simplify. So in this particular problem, that's a good approach. We don't want to just take two to the eighth and figure out what number that is. Now, of course, you could figure that out and do all the multiplication, then do some division by dividing by 16. But we want to do this in a little bit smarter way. So let's go ahead and show you uh, this approach. OK, so two to the eighth, that is a power. So what does this mean? Well, it means two multiplied by itself eight times. So here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is then to all the factors of 2 to the 8. Now, 16, I could be like, well, OK, I, uh, I want to kind of factor this because I'm thinking of this as a fraction that I almost want to reduce, right? So I can go up 4 times 4, right? That's 16. Uh, but if I do 4 times 4, uh, well, I don't have any 4s up in uh, the numerator. I just have 4s down in the denominator. Now, you could get 4s by taking this to uh, 2 and 2, that would become a 4, and then this 2 and 2 would become a 4. So that's not a bad approach. But what I want to kind of show you here is how this problem is connected to algebra. 
But uh, you could also go two times eight, right? You're like, well, two times eight, that's 16. Uh, well, I got a two here, I got a two here, I got cross cancel, but I still got to, you know, uh, deal with this eight. But what you could do is recognize that, you know what, 16, uh, if you said, well, that's four times four, and then four is two times two, and four over here is two times two. Well, 16 it really is two times two times two times two. Well, this is what you want to be thinking, okay? You got four twos down here, and you got eight twos up here. And now with uh, this setup, it's quite easy to simplify this problem, right? So two to the eighth, we can think of as uh, two times itself eight times, and 16 is two times itself four times. So I could take these twos, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Remember, when you're dealing with cross-canceling like factors, it's one for one. This two can uh, cross-cancel that two, this one can cross-cancel this one, and so forth. So what are we left over with? We're left over with four uh, these two, uh, these four twos, right? Two times two times two times two. Well, we already know what that is because two times two times two times two is 16. So our final answer is 16. Okay. Now, of course, you could have taken two to the eighth, um, figured out what that is and divided by 16. So, you know, if you got 16, that's great. Or you could have just kind of looked at these uh, um, factors and kind of figured it out differently. But really what you want to do, okay, is um, think of things and when you see a power and you're asked to work with the power, something like this, two to the eighth power, it's a good idea to try to write everything in terms of a, uh, a power as well. So 16, I could uh, write that as a power as four squared, right? But that's not going to really help me out uh, here because we have a rule in algebra, okay? It's called the division of um, powers rule, okay? So when we're dividing um, powers and exponents, the base, if I look at a, um, let's just kind of do a quick review here. This is uh, four to the second power, okay? Four to the second power, that's how you would say that. But this little two up here is called the exponent, and this big four down here is called the base, okay? The entire thing is called a power. So this is four to the second uh, power, or, but the parts of the power is the base and exponent. So there's a rule that states that when we're dividing powers and exponents, if the bases are the same, then all we can do, or all we need to do is subtract the exponent. So what we want to do is think of 16 here, okay? Not as four squared, although 16 is uh, indeed four squared. We want to think of this as two to the fourth power, okay? Because here now we have uh, the same bases, okay? So this is two and this is two. And then now what we can do is simply subtract the exponents. So this is the rule in algebra, right? Matter of fact, I'll write it down here formally. So uh, if you're not familiar with this rule, it's only one of the rules that you need to know. It's a to the m over a to the n. It's division of powers, okay? And here, this a and this a are indicating that the, these powers have the same base. And so the answer is a to the m minus n, meaning that we subtract exponents. So I can just look at this um, problem like, oh, 2 to the 8th, oh, 16 is the same thing as 2 to the 4th. So now all I need to do is subtract away 4 from 8, or 8 minus 4 is 4, right? So that's my new exponent, or 2 to the 4th, which, of course, is 16. Okay, so again, um, a couple different approaches you could take to solve this problem. But, Dan, I want to connect this uh, to algebra because algebra is connected with arithmetic. You know, math is just one big continuum, all right? So for those of you that are like, oh, I, you know, I already finished elementary math. Uh, I'm in middle school, or, you know, I don't need to remember elementary math. Or middle school, I don't remember that. I don't need to, you know, uh, recall that because I'm in high school math. I do, you know, algebra and stuff. No, math is math. It's all interconnected. And you need to kind of, you know, uh, keep your previous skills. So what you learn in elementary school, middle school, high school, you cannot, you know, just like learn a skill and then forget the skill. So that's why it's important if you're struggling with something in mathematics to get, you know, to get help for it. All right. Math is just learning one, you know, skill at a time. So if you need um, uh, help with basic math, I want to suggest checking out my Math Foundations course. You can see or you can find a link to it in the description below as well. Uh, if you're in pre-algebra or algebra, I'll leave links to those courses as well. But uh, hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like 
and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.